Hi everyone, I'm Eric Chang. My presentation is about localization in video games. I'll start out by telling you a story. I was playing a video game called Animal Crossing and I was trying to learn Spanish. So I decided to set the language in the game to Spanish to help me learn. Animal Crossing is a life simulation game. You start out on a deserted island and build a house and catch fish and bugs. You're a human, but all of your neighbors are animals like lions and tigers and bears, oh my, and you talk to them. So when the animals talk to you, they'll start with a greeting. So in Spanish, in the game, they have greetings like, como estas, which is, how are you? Como le va, how's it going? And I saw one that said, que cuentas, which I had never heard before. At the time I was working part-time at child support and there was a Hispanic girl there that I liked. She was very quiet, very reticent. She hardly talked at all. So one day we had a fire drill. We all had to go, we all had to evacuate the building and stand in the parking lot and wait until we were allowed to go back inside. We were all just standing around. So I asked her, what does que cuentas mean? She said, it means, what do you have to tell me? But that's the literal translation. <clears throat> There's also what I would call the semantic translation Semantic means meaning, and that could be what's up, what's new, what's going on, or what it do. I don't know if you're familiar. So then we just stood there for a while until we were allowed to go back inside. <laughs> Later, I asked her if she wanted to go eat lunch, my treat, and she said, I bring my lunch to work. But the way she said it, I never asked her again. So localization of video games is a complex task. It's more than just translating from one language into another. And even if it was, that's a monumental task in and of itself. I'm going to talk about some approaches to localization and some examples in games like Pac-Man, Animal Crossing, Harvest Moon, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, and Final Fantasy. Uh, localization has evolved into a complex process undertaken by a variety of actors with different skill sets, materials, and approaches to carrying out the process. There's official and unofficial, which is often illegal, localization. It began almost with the advent of video games themselves. Early efforts made basic changes to text like games such as Pac-Man. Now you may be thinking, why do they need to translate? What do they need to translate in Pac-Man? There aren't any words. That's mostly true, but there are a few words like ready, high score, and game over. However, the title of Pac-Man itself was the result of localization. Originally, the game was called Puck-Man, I guess because he looks like a hockey puck, but executives at Namco, the company that created the game, worried that vandals in arcades would easily be able to change the P to an F to make an expletive. So they changed the name to Pac-Man and the founder of Namco, Masaya Nakamura, felt that that was closer to the Japanese name for him, which was Pakuman. Pakuman comes from the onomatopoeic Japanese phrase Paku Paku Taburu, which means to gobble something up. Onomatopoeia is where a word comes from imitating a sound. For example, the English word buzz comes from the sound that bees make. Now, in the early days of video games, many games did not leave Japan. Localizing a game was kind of expensive, and it was a risk because it was difficult to tell which games would sell well overseas and which would not. But many of the games that did leave Japan were instant hits and affected the culture of the video game industry and popular consciousness in ways that we still do not fully understand. There's a game called Zero Wing from 1992 that has a funny introduction clip to it. Zero Wing was not a hit, but it spawned, it spawned a meme that was pretty funny. When I first saw the meme in 1999, I thought that it was drastically changed from the original video game, but it's actually based almost word for word on the poorly done localization of the game. I won't show you the meme because it's too long. It's about three and a half minutes long, which is past the time limit that we're allowed for video clips. But I'll show you the actual video of the intro from the game, which is a minute and 37 seconds. So here we go.
Okay, so there you have it. Um, yeah, so the most of the humor comes from the grammatical errors and the title R should be removed. It should say all your bases belong to us. Um, you have no chance to survive is correct, but I'm not sure what they were trying to say with make your time. It might be make my day, or maybe they were trying to say, enjoy the last moments of your life. Also, I'm not sure what zigs are. They might be like escape pods or some kind of offensive weapon, but anyway, it's pretty funny. So although Japanese games used to be sold a lot overseas, sales have been shrinking from a 50% share of the market in 2002 to about a 10% share in 2009, as they encountered greater competition from Western developers. So in other words, more and more games are being created in English or German or whatever native Western language it is. Thus, there is no need to localize them. It's interesting to note that as far as I can tell, all of the localization in video games is translated from Japanese to English or from Japanese to another language, but it's starting with Japanese. I don't know of any games that started in English and were localized to Japan with maybe the exception of Minecraft. Again, many Japanese games were never localized and were only released in Japan. So some fans hunt games down and play them in the original Japanese or figure out some way to translate them. Now, whether they're professionals or amateurs, localizers bridge a divide. On one layer, there's the divide of language and culture. Language and culture go together because language carries culture with it. When you speak a different language, you think a different way too. There's a story in the book of Genesis about the Tower of Babel. Everyone used to speak the same language and they decided to build a tower that would reach up to God. God looked down and said, Everyone has one mind and one language, so there's nothing that they can't do. So he created different languages so that they couldn't understand each other. But it was more than just not understanding one another's words. Their ways of thinking were also different. <clears throat> there are analytical and synthetic languages. German and Japanese are on the very analytical side of the spectrum. And Navajo is a language that's on the very synthetic side of the spectrum. So in World War II, the United States used Navajo people to send war messages over the radio. The Japanese were never able to break the code because the ways of thinking between those two languages is so different. A second layer is literature. There is an influence of Japanese literature on Japanese video games that Westerners are unaware of. And like Dr. Green was saying in one of her lectures, um, in Japanese video games, sometimes they're expected to kind of fill in the blanks or figure out what's going on, which Westerners are more used to 
things explicitly being told to us. So let's look at an example where they successfully bridged that divide in Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. It's a very text heavy game. Almost the entire game involves talking, talking, talking. The game world itself is a limited two dimensional static world. The game started out in Japan as Gyakuten Saiban, which trends, which means turnabout trial. <clears throat> now, like I said before, localization is more than just translation. Kate Edwards has coined the term culturalization for it. It means to, quote, convey a sense of the many subjective nuances that localization projects can entail, <clears throat> end quote. Ace Attorney uses puns, name-based gags, pop culture references, and the like as a central part of its appeal. Jokes and pop culture references do not translate well, so it's very difficult to convey the it's very difficult to convey them to foreign markets, but they were able to pull it off, which is impressive. By the way, in Animal Crossing, there is an owl who is the curator of the museum. In the Japanese version, he uses a very humble and polite form of the word I to refer to himself in Japanese. Since there's no other word for I in English, instead the localizers chose to have him speak in a very formal and antiquated way, like a professor from the 17th century. So there are some clever ways to localize a game that overcome limitations in direct translation. Animal Crossing also introduces items from different cultures to commemorate different holidays, and it has articles of clothing that are specific to individual cultures, like a kimono, for example. <laughs> anyway, going back to Phoenix Wright, his name in the Japanese game is Ruchi Narahodo. Narahodo can mean I see, and it is a phrase often inserted in conversation to signal attentiveness or agreement, like hai naru, naruhodo, which means yes, I see. So it would be ridiculous to name him Mr. I see. Therefore, they chose Phoenix Wright so that they can use puns like right, right, and I believe you are wrong, Mr. Wright. One of the characters in the game, Sal Manella, another pun, the director of a tokusatsu show, which is a live action television drama that employs special effects, a style that is reminiscent of such shows as Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, Sal Manella directs a tokusatsu show called Steel Samurai, and he uses elite speak a play on elite speak in formal language of the internet. So he utters phrases like, I make the steel samurai noob R-O-F-L. Noob means a player who's new to a game, so they're not that good at it yet. And R-O-F-L stands for rolling on the floor laughing. It's important to note that the Western localizations of these video games are not derivative works, but rather a parallel version that stands on their own. For example, the English version of Phoenix Wright became so popular that when they did a live action play about it in Japan, they actually used the name Phoenix Wright instead of Ruchi Narahodo. Now, when you're localizing a video game, you have to decide whether you want to go with domestication or foreignization. Domestication is where you try to scrub or change all of the Japanese references and make the game most like the culture to which you're localizing it. Organization is the opposite, where you try to leave all of the Japanese references in the game, or as many as you can, which does hold some appeal. Many Americans in particular are fascinated with Japanese culture. Food changes are one of the most common things that occur in localization. A famous example of domestication is in the cartoon Pokemon. In one of the episodes, a character named Brock exclaims, these are really good donuts. But if you look closely, you can see that he's eating rice balls and that no attempt was made to change the video portion of the cartoon. In the game Harvest Moon, they removed references to alcohol because they felt that it was inappropriate for children. In the 1990s, parents in the United States became concerned with violent and inappropriate content in video games. In response, Nintendo made some ironclad rules in localization. One of them was that all religious references even seemingly benign ones, had to be removed from their video games. So in the game Earthbound Beginnings, gravestones were edited to remove crosses from them. <clears throat> in the original Final Fantasy, crosses were removed from churches and they were called clinics instead. Pope-like hats were removed from characters as well. 
In another one of the early Final Fantasy games, a character tries to kill herself by jumping off of a cliff. They absolutely could not leave that in the game, but the North American localization team also did not have the technical expertise to edit a cutscene. So they left it in there and they tried to explain it away by saying, sometimes people jump off of a cliff to perk themselves up. Can you believe that? So this concludes my presentation. Localization is a very complex process and it is more than just translating. Two approaches are to either domesticate the game, make it more like the target country or foreignize the game leave the Japanese references in it. I hope this presentation was enlightening and thank you for watching.